Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. We've made it to day 30, and today we're looking more closely at the imperative. So yesterday, basically all we learned was how to form the imperative. A uh, couple of things to remember. First off, uh, as was the case with simply conjugating verbs, right? Aspect has nothing to do with our technique for forming the imperative, uh, right? So just like when we were conjugating verbs and we would take a verb like chitides, which is an I verb, and then we had its perfective equivalent, prochitides, that perfective verb, we just go and conjugate it, prochitai, prochitai, right? The same way we would conjugate chitides, right? So again, in terms of their, their conjugated forms, uh, aspect uh, makes no, no distinction uh, in, in Russian verbs, right? Uh, same with the imperative, right? So we could go through the same step-by-step -step method to form imperatives for either aspect. So if we stick with that same example, chitides, prochitides, the imperfective would be chitai, right? And the perfective prochitai, right? So we learned how to form those. We learned also that the, the real trick here is forming the th imperative, like chitai, right? That can be a bit tricky. Uh, we saw how it's ultimately pretty useful to learn the imperatives by type, right? Like the imperatives of I verbs uh, that ends in I, right? Like chitai, prochitai, Right, and then we saw that uh, there is this, this so-called step-by-step method that you can use to kind of, in most cases, arrive at the correct imperative form uh, if you may not just be able to, if you may not have, have it memorized. And that can be especially useful with some more bizarre verb types down at the bottom of the, the our verb table, right, all those non-suffix stems and things like that. Uh, okay, so anyway, we, we learned in theory how to arrive at the thu form of the imperative, and we learned a very important point that to form the vui imperative, you simply add tia to the end of the thu form. And as we said several times, there there is no exception to that rule, right? It's, uh, it's very easy, very convenient. Okay, so now today we're going to look more at how to use those forms, right? And especially, for example, how to choose between aspect, right? When would you use a, uh, an imperfective command like chitai? versus a perfective one like prochitai, right? What's the difference? Uh, well, you may already have some ideas, uh, but we'll go through it in detail today. Uh, let's look at a couple of quick posters. Uh, vigilance is our weapon. Um, although it's not on the poster, this brings to mind the uh, ubiquitous phrase in the Soviet Union, So there's a, a command we learned yesterday, the verb buit, is irregular and uh, its imperative is but, but, right? Now from that we would get the vui imperative, but, tia, right? Uh, so we say but, bdichilnim, that's the tui imperative, meaning be vigilant. If we were being more formal or speaking to multiple people, we would say but, tia, bdichilnimi, right? Well, bdichilnay is a short form adjective. Anyway, uh, so uh, bdichilnay is this idea of being vigilant. Right, look always on the lookout for saboteurs, or as they're sometimes called, wreckers. Right, these people who are uh, kind of uh, trying to sabotage a building project or things like this. Right, uh, spies and, and all these uh, types that are trying to undermine uh, communism. Okay, here's another quick imperative: nilgi nikagda, never lie. Nilgi nikagda. Okay, let's look at this for a moment and we'll get our first uh, sense of how to choose aspect when giving commands. What is this mother telling the child? Is she saying, don't lie this one time? No, that probably isn't something a mother would say uh, anyway, unless again, she's focused on a very specific uh, incident, right? Now here we have an additional clue. We have a nikagda, which we know is an imperfective marker, right? This is a very broad context, right? Never ever do this. Uh, and so a lot of things here point to the imperfective, and that's what she's used here, right? We don't know this verb yet, but this the pair is ugat, solgat, uh, which is a very strange verb, by the way. Uh, the forms are given to you in the book there. Uh, so we can see clearly that uh, the, the form lgi is the imperative not from solgat, but obviously from ugat, right? So it is an uh, once we see the pair, we can see that this is an imperfective imperative. It makes perfect sense given the context, and she's saying, don't ever lie. 
Okay, so that gives us our first um, general principle for choosing aspect with commands. If you're giving a general command, right, something that's kind of generally or even universally valid, then you'd use the imperfective, whether that's a, a positive suggestion, like always do this, or negative, right, don't ever do this, that type of idea, right, you're going to get imperfective. So hopefully by now you can grasp the, the fact that, that that makes perfect sense. We don't really need to go into a bunch of explanation, right? Because again, we're talking about this very broad context we get with the imperfective, the idea of repetition or habit, right? Again, we could throw in keywords like, uh, or uh, red flag words like sigda, right? Always, or nikagda nie, right? Never. Those are kind of those, just those blanket um, adverbs that are, uh, telling us we really need the, the imperfective in these instances. So let's look at a couple of ideas, a couple of examples. nikogda. Uh, okay, sort of like in the poster, don't ever do this, right? Don't ever do this. By the way, there's a footnote here in the book. Atava there is in the, what do you think, what do you think that case here is? Genitive. Okay, why on earth is that in the genitive? Well, this is something, uh, I think we actually mentioned this uh, kind of in passing. But uh, you should always be on the lookout in Russian for um, direct objects of negated verbs appearing not in the accusative, but in the genitive, right? We don't teach that as a, as a formal kind of grammatical rule, but uh, I usually talk about it as more of a tendency or a possibility that students should usually watch out for passively, right? You shouldn't be going around doing this as a habit probably, but... Uh, Here's an example, right? Right, so here, that this atha, this that, this or that is the object of the imperative, don't do. Well, don't do what? Don't do this, right? And again, because of the negation, we're seeing here uh, the genitive uh, pop up. Okay, now, so there's a negative uh, command, right? Don't ever do that, a universal warning or prohibition now here's a positive example. Right? Do your assignment. Do your assignment. Now again, especially if we throw in something like Kajdijin, an imperative red flag, then it's clear that we're talking about doing this habitually, every day, all the time, or whatever. That's clearly imperfective. Uh, another example. Chitaitu Okay, there we don't have any red flags, so this is a good one to look at, right? So what is what is the imperfective aspect conveying here? Well, we want someone to, to we want someone to do this regularly, right? Uh, it sounds like we recommend this newspaper, and it's a good newspaper. You should read it as a rule, habitually. It's always a good idea to read the newspaper. Uh, okay, so again, imperfective. Now, what if we make that a negative, right? We say, don't ever read this newspaper. It's a bad newspaper. Uh, don't don't ever read it. Nietzschitaetu gazietu. Right now, again, look at how simply by choosing imperfective aspect, we're getting across this idea of kind of a universal command, right? We don't necessarily need a red flag to, to convey that basic idea, right? Although, again, if we throw one in there, then it makes it even more, more clearly uh, imperfective. Um, you turn the page, uh, here's another propaganda poster with an imperfective negative command, Papa Nipie. Papa, ni pie. Papa, don't drink. Okay, so that's uh, that could be understood as a general prohibition, right? Obviously, dad should cut down on the alcohol, right? By the way, I've always thought this poster is one of the most just gut-wrenching, horrific posters uh, that I've ever seen, really. I mean, uh, this, this kid is, is just really, <laughs> this grotesque expression on his face, kind of agonizing. Okay, but there is one other sense we could understand this, uh, and uh, namely, if you're begging someone to do something or not to do it or whatever, uh, that can also be conveyed using the uh, imperfective, an imperfective command. And we'll talk more about that uh, at some point down the road. So, ni pie, ni pie, right? You're begging someone emphatically not to do something. That will also be imperfective. By the way, even if it's a single incident, right? So that's one way you can understand this poster, right? If we imagine this as a specific incident where dad, dad is raising his glass again, oh my God. And the kid, you know, is saying, please don't do it, daddy. Please don't, don't drink, right? Uh, 
so again, this poster can be read both of those ways. Uh, uh, anyway, it, it's really up to how you interpret it, right, without any further context. Okay, so uh, now, so what about the perfective? When do you use uh, perfective commands? Well, um, there's there, there, one part of this is tricky, the other isn't, right? If you're giving a positive command, like, hey, do this, do that, right, kind of in the here and now, right? It's not that we want you to always do it. We're just saying, hey, right here, right now, very narrow context, go and do this, go and do that. Just kind of everyday commands that aren't universal in nature. Okay, it makes perfect sense based on what we know about aspect that those would be perfective, right? Do this, do that. Uh, you could also imagine the idea of go and get it done, right? It's not that we want you to go about doing something. We want you to just go and do it, right? Get it done, get it done successfully, do it completely, uh, and, and all, of that, all of that stuff that's baked into the perfective. Okay, so here are some simple everyday requests in the, per, in the perfective. Dajte pajalste chashko korfje. All right, there's the perfective imperative from dajte. Note, by the way, that it's not davaitje, right? Davai or davaitje would be the imperfective. Uh, so give me a cup of coffee, right? Dajte pajalsta, that's a good way to ask for things in a when ordering in a restaurant or a cafe or whatever, right? Simply give it to me, right? That one-time request. Right? Hey, grab the umbrella. Take the umbrella, please. Give him a call tomorrow, okay? Right? Uh, one-time call. Give him a call. Go and do it. Very simple one-time command. Give me a hand, please. Okay, again, note that that's not pomagai. Uh, from pomagait, right, which actually don't really hear that, that often, right? Usually people are asking for help in just a concrete uh, circumstance, right? Hey, give me a hand with this. Help me out here, right? Very specific, very narrow context, perfective command. Uh, now, that leads to a somewhat tricky matter of when do you use uh, perfective commands uh, in the negative, right? When do you tell something, don't do this, don't do that, using a perfective command? Okay, that's a, a fairly uh, unusual situation. And we're going to talk more about this next year when we move on to advanced aspects. So this will be a little bit clearer maybe at that point. Uh, I don't want to spill the beans right now because, again, we, we have enough on our plate already. Uh, <laughs> we don't need any additional beans on our plates. I'm mixing metaphors here. Okay, so um, Negative commands in the perfective are given when we see someone about to do something that we know they don't want to do, right, or that they're not supposed to do. And so one way to think about this is instead of this kind of universal, don't ever do that, don't do it as a habit, we have a narrow context. Someone's about to go and do it one time, uh, and we're like, hey, whoa, don't do that, don't do that, right? I think that's probably the easiest way without getting into advanced aspect of understanding these negative commands in the perfective, and you can see already that those aren't the kind of things you hear every day, right? It's not every day where you're like, oh my God, don't do that, right? Um, you know, usually when you're giving negative commands in Russian, it just works out that it, it's, it's always a bad idea, you would never want to do it, and so you end up uh, kind of tending towards the imperfective. Okay, so let's just look at a couple of examples, and maybe you might want to just circle this and keep in mind that uh, it's, it's somewhat unusual. Okay, so let's compare uh, two sets of examples. Nizabuvaitje zont versus nizabuj zont. Okay, which one is imperfective? The first one, right? The pair is zabuvaitje zabuj. Okay, and this is what you'd normally hear. Don't forget the umbrella, right? That's uh, just a universal kind of rule. But now, what if we? What if it's again narrow the context, right? The more, the more, the narrower the context, the more likely we are to see perfective. What if we see, oh, we're walking out the door and someone's about to go and forget the umbrella, right? And again, um, on top of that, we may have this idea that we told them to take it, they were, they were supposed to take it, or we assume that they would want to take it, right? Maybe it's cloudy outside, right? So all of these things could mix in, could feed into our decision to use a perfective and say, right? hey, don't forget the umbrella. Um, Okay, another set, не посуду, don't break dishes, right? That's an imperfective, universal, uh, negative command. Okay, now imagine a scenario, obviously very specific, in which we would say, смотри, не разбей тарелку. Hey, whoa, look out, don't break that plate. 
right? Now look also how we've gone from dishes, this kind of broad category, to a specific plate, right? A specific, you know, again, one-time uh, incident that calls for the um, perfective. Okay, let's uh, create a few um, imperatives. And as usual here, working with aspect, it's a little bit hard to think of exercises for this, right? Because unless I write you like a full paragraph, it's hard to maybe get a full sense of the context. So let's just read these simple sentences and think, what is the most likely scenario here and what, what aspect would we choose for our imperative? Um, okay, buy me a bottle of vodka. Okay, that falls under the category of just simple everyday commands, right? We're not telling someone, hey, always buy me vodka, buy me, bod buy me vodka every day, right? It's just, hey, go buy me a bottle of vodka. Okay, so that's going to be perfective. That would be from kupit, right? The pair is pukupait, kupit. Our imperative would be kupi, right? And by the way, let's just stick with tli imperatives for now. Let's imagine we're talking to a friend and we say, hey, buy, buy me a bottle of vodka. Okay, number two, this is clearly a universal kind of warning or prohibition. That will be imperfective. Nie pukupaitu vodku, right? Don't ever do it. Now we could throw in a never, right? But even without the nikagda, right? The imperfective conveys the idea that this is a general prohibition. Okay, number three, don't forget the vodka. Okay, here we're actually using a different verb. Uh, we're going to use forget, right? Which we had in the example up there. Don't forget the vodka. Okay, so that is obviously the... An example with the perfective imperative, uh, right, in the negative, which is somewhat unusual, but you can imagine this is a very common one, right? Nezabut, don't forget to do something, right, that you were maybe supposed to do or told to do or wanted to do, right? So the idea is you're going to go and do it by accident, right? You wouldn't intentionally forget it. Um, so that's, that's one way to think often of, of these negative commands in the perfective, right? Someone's about to do something they, they don't want to, and we're warning them not to do it, to forget, or whatever. Okay, number four, write to him tomorrow. Okay, just a one-time, everyday command. So that's clearly perfective. Uh, right, we're using the dative, write to him tomorrow. Number five, uh, do write me, right, in the sense of keep in touch. Okay, this is said pretty common when people are splitting up or whatever. And the idea isn't necessarily, hey, send me an email, but simply uh, write me in general, right? In general, let's keep in touch. Pishi, pishi. Right now, uh, you know, we could think that of that also as kind of an exhortative command, right? We're kind of, well, not literally, but we're pleading with someone, hey, write me, come on, write me. So, you know, we could read it that way, depending on the intonation, the context or whatever, or more simply, just as a general uh, request, right? Keep in touch with me, write me. Okay, number six, a negative uh, command, don't write that person. Okay, remember with negatives, uh, we're going to tend towards the imperfective unless we see some obvious reason to use the perfective, right? So if we tell someone don't write that person, it's more likely that the idea is they should never do it, right? Maybe this is a bad person, right? Uh, so it's not that you, should, you shouldn't go and accidentally write the person one time. That just you see how odd that is, right? Rather, we would tend to see a general prohibition. So this would probably be uh, Okay, number seven. Uh, call me, I'm begging you. Okay, there's another example where we've we've thrown in a little uh, footnote, right? This is someone begging. Okay, so we could say that would be imperfective. Zvani, Okay, so why is that kind of important? Because even if this were, again, like in the poster with, with bad drinking, right? Even this, if this were a very specific context where we would normally use the perfective, like, hey, give me a call, right? Again, if we're begging the person, then we get the imperfective. So that's kind of a special situation. Zvani, zvani. Okay, number eight, don't call my fiancé. Okay, I don't know what's going on here, but this probably is a general prohibition, right? Nie zvani mojej niewieskie, dative. Number nine, give dad a call tomorrow. Okay, give him a call. It's, it sounds like a very simple one-time command. It's going to be perfective. Pozvani papie. Pozvani papie zavtra. Right, give dad a call. Number 10, call your mom. Okay, so 
just a little bit of context regularly, right? It means, hey, you should keep in touch with mom. You should call her once a week or whatever. So this is a general command, and the form will be zvanyi, zvanyi mamie. Okay, next peer, pakazvit pakazat, to show. Number 11, show me your photo. Okay, sounds clearly like a one-time specific, we're talking about a specific photograph. This is a perfective imperative. Pakazhi mnie tvoju fotografiju. Or simply, pakazhi mnie fotografiju. Number 12, don't ever show that photo. Okay, again, sounds like it's a bad idea generally to show this photo. It's not something... We're saying, hey, don't go and accidentally show it once. We're saying, don't ever show it. That would be imperfective. Nipakazavui etu fotografiu. Nipakazavui etu fotografiu. Now, 13, here's maybe a nice example. Oh, hey, don't show that photo. Okay, so, you know, this little word in English, like, whoa, hey, that, that kind of thing, that often is a nice clue where, uh, that we, we're dealing with a situation where we could use a perfective, like, Someone goes to pull out the photo, and we're like, oh, don't do that, right? So we're not really, uh, it's not really the, the context for this universal prohibition. We're kind of in the moment, and we're like, hey, don't show, don't show that photo right now. Okay, so that would be, ne pokaži etu fotografiju, perfective. Number 14, wash the dishes every evening. Okay, that's a repeated, universal type of request. That would be, moj, moj pasudu. Now, again, we could just leave it right there, right? That's already a, a kind of a general command, but let's throw in every evening. Now, that's kind of a red flag that we definitely need the imperfective. Okay, compare that to 15. Wash the dishes, please. Okay, that sounds like a, just a one-time request. Hey, could you wash the dishes? That would be perfective. Pamoj pasudu, pajalsta. Pamoj pasudu. Okay, 16. Help me. Okay, we mentioned already that this, you almost only ever hear this in the perfect, right? Hey, give me a hand, help me out. Pomagi, pomagi, pomagi mnie. Remember that verb takes the dative. Um, now, don't help him. Uh, well, again, we have zero context here, but if this were universal, right, don't ever give him help. He, he doesn't deserve it or something like that. That would be nie pomagai, nie pomagai. Again, if it's a very concrete one-time situation, then it would be nipomagi, nipomagi. That would sort of like be an English, be sort of like an English saying, "Hey, don't, don't, don't bail him out here. Don't give him a hand with this. Let him do it himself." Again, in some kind of specific one-time context. Here's a nice paslovitsa: "Bogu malis at birgu gribis." Literally, pray to God, but row toward the shore. Sort of like God helps those who help themselves, right? Okay, here are a couple of other um, imperatives uh, in posters with uchitsa, our favorite verb. Rem remember Lenin, right? Uchitsa, uchitsa, uchitsa. This kid says, uchis na piat. Right? A little hard to translate that literally. Uh, uchis, he's saying study uh for a five, or study such that you, you'll earn a five, which is like getting an A in Russian. In Russia, uh, they, they do, where we, in the U.S. at least, have A, B, C, D, etc. They have numbers. And so a pichurka, uh, which is a special, um, a special form of the number piat. We haven't learned our numbers yet, so we don't really shouldn't dwell too much on this, but this is what they call grades in Russia. Pichurka is a five, that's the best grade. Chityurka is a four. Troika is a three. Dvoika is a two. And then uh, a one, which is like an F, is yedinitsa, sometimes called a kol in kind of colloquial Russian. A kol is like a stake, you know, like a hole or something. So obviously the number one looks kind of like a, like a kol. Okay, here's another poster. Uh, study well, and all roads will be open to you. Uh, yeah, the subject, we, we're dealing with some plurals here, which we don't haven't really studied yet, but siedarogi, well, there's our word sie, meaning all, right? All the roads. Siedarogi, budut, they will be atkriti. Now note that that's a short form adjective in the predicate, right? All roads will be open. Uh, this is actually a participle, 
uh, formed from the verb ad kreit, and we'll learn how to form those in book three, so more on that later. But again, you see how the, uh, uh, in any case, it's a short form of that participle, ad kreiti, as opposed to ad kreiti, yeah, that would be the long plural form. Okay, uh, let's do a few imperative uh, forms of reflexive verbs. Now, again, as always, these are, there's nothing really remarkable about these. We're just forming the imperative and then tacking on the reflexive particle. Now, remember generally that if you're, if you're working with a verb that has a reflexive particle, it's a very common mistake among students just to forget about the reflexive particle. Now, keep in mind that if you do that, you're at best going to change the meaning of the verb, and at worst, you're going to get a verb that doesn't even exist at all, right? Remember, some verbs always have the reflexive particle. But in any case, you're going to say something you don't, you don't mean to say, right? So again, if, if, if the verb has the reflexive particle, keep it on there when you're forming its imperative or any other, when you're conjugating it or doing anything else to the verb. So for example, look at starazza, to try. Okay, if we simply ignore the sia for a moment, we're dealing with an I verb, so we would get starai, right? Then we just need to go and add, on, add the reflexive particle back on um, since starai ends in a consonant, ukratke is a consonant, we add sia and we get staraisia. Now with the vui, the vui form would be staraitia, right? We add tia to get our vui form, staraitia, and then again at the very end of the form we add back on the reflexive particle, right? Staraitis. From uchitsa, we would get uchi, and then the forms we saw in the poster, uchis, uchis. Or plural uchitia, uchitis. Gatovitsa, that would give us gatov, uh, gatovsia, right? Tri gatovsia. Or plural gatovtia, right? Adding the tia, then again the reflexive particle, we get gatovtis, gatovtis. Okay, so let's do a few of these, and it may be good, again, if you're struggling with this a little bit, just start without the particle and then add the particle. But again, don't forget to add the particle. Okay, so virnutsa. Okay, tu virnis. Sorry, let's do without the particle. Virni, virni, which would mean something like return the book or something, give back the book or whatever. But we want to say here, come back, right? You yourself, come back. We add the particle, we get virnis, virnis. Okay, vui would be virnitia, and then we add the particle virnitis, virnitis. Number two, number two, an oi verb, uh, remember from yesterday, that'll be moi, moi. Okay, let's add the particle to say wash yourself or bathe, moisia, moisia. Okay, uh, vui would be moitia. Moitia, add the particle moitis, moitis. Number three, podgatovitsa. Okay, here's the perfective of the example we just saw, right? Get ready. Maybe get ready for the exam. Atui podgatov. Right, there's an, an e verb with the stress on the stem. So remember that stress rule. The ya form would be prigatovliu, right? Not prigatovliu. And for that reason, we're adding the sop sign, not the e, right? Prigato, sorry, padgatov, padgatov. Uh, add the particle back on, and we get padgatovsia, padgatovsia. Okay, vui, uh, padgatovtia, adding the tia. Now the particle, padgatovtis, padgatovtis. Number four, popitatsa, okay, an I verb. So this means a uh, you know, gives try to do something uh, specific, right? Perfective. Three, papitai, add the particle papitaisia, papitaisia, right? Give it a try. Vui, papitaitia, papitaitis. Number five, uh, get your picture taken. Three, and by the way, this is an imperfective, so this would be kind of a general command. Uh, Okay, ova, remember, is gonna is gonna collapse to an ui, right, in the imperative. Ui. Fotografirui. Tui fotografirui. Okay, remember that would mean you take you photograph, you take pictures, but we want to say get photographed. Passive 
we add the particle and we get Photographierruisia. Photographierruisia. Or V would be Photographierruitia and the reflexive Photographierruitis. Photographierruitis. Uh, number six, Nochitsa. Okay, there's an E verb. We note that the stress is on the final consonant if we ignore it. The final syllable, sorry, the final syllable if we kind of ignore the xia. So that implies uh, nao chu, and that gives us the three form nao chi. Nao chi would mean teach someone something, but we want to say learn something yourself. So we add back the reflexive particle and we get nao chi. Nao chi. Learn to do something. Uh, perfective. Vui nao chi and with the particle nauchitis. Okay, starazza. We actually saw this in the uh, models. Uh, starai with the particle staraisia, right? Try to do something. Again, this is emphasizing effort, so we could say in English, strive to do something. Number, f number. Uh, sorry, the next one. Vui staraitia. Adding back the particle, we get staraitis. Staraitis. And a very commonly heard Paslovitsa, Viek Jivi, Viek Uchis. Live for a lifetime, learn for a lifetime. This word Viek uh, can mean at least three different things. It can mean literally a century. It can mean like a, a, an historical age, you know, like uh, the age of automobiles or something, something of that nature. Or it can mean a lifetime, right? So there are kind of a few different ways to read this, but the point is, the same, right? You should always keep learning. Sounds like something Lumen would tell us. Okay, before we move on to our next topic, we could get a quick uh, and very useful preview of it by learning how to say toasts in Russian. Right? Skazhi toast paruski. Say a toast in Russian. So if you're, uh, you know, it's some kind of even semi-formal celebration or whatever, or you're having a uh, kind of a vodka evening or whatever it may be, right? Russians are prone to giving toasts, right? So sometimes these can be very informal and kind of silly, or again, if it's some kind of special occasion, they may be more elaborate, like at a wedding or something like that, right? So it's a very useful little formula to know. Um, so the formula would be something like давайте выпьем, right? Давайте выпьем. Now we know that выпить, the perfective means just to, to, you know, bottoms up, to have a drink. Um, now here we're using a a a, a davai or davaitya would be the vui form. We learned that yesterday. It means literally give, right? Give, but it's also used in uh, constructions meaning hey, let's do something, right? It's used to make suggestions, right? So you could think of it maybe literally if it's helpful, something like uh, give, let's drink. Hey, give, let's drink. But again, in the way we would say something like hey, let's do this, let's do that, or Something like that, right? So again, kind of a peculiar idiom. Davaitya vipyam. Now let's look at the form of the verb that follows davai. We're getting a mui form of the verb because we're we're telling about something we want to do. Hey, let us do this. Let's do this. Let's drink. So we need a mui form of the verb. And one more thing, what tense is this verb? Vipyam. Well, it's a conjugated perfective verb, so that means it's future tense. Okay, so that's kind of the formula for this. A davai construction is followed by a future tense mui form of the verb. Yeah, if you can remember that formula, uh, our next little lesson will be uh, fairly easy, right? But as usual, you really have to learn the formula and stick to it. Uh, there's really no getting around it. Okay, but anyway, if you're making a toast, you don't really have to say that at all, right? You could say davai te vui pim za. Or you could simply say za, right? Uh, that would be a complete toast, and it's followed by the accusative, right? So here are a few very simple examples. Za zdarovye, that's a very common toast. Um, by the way, it's a co common misconception that na zdarovye is a Russian toast. It is not a toast. I'm not sure why, why this confusion, where it started. I think part of it is that it is a toast, and in other Slavic languages, there's some version of this uh, that begins with na in those languages. But in Russian, you only say na um, 
well, usually when you're like giving someone something, like maybe you're giving them food and they say, oh, thank you. And you say, Nazdarovya, meaning may it, may it uh, contribute to your health or something. That's kind of the idea, right? Take it uh, toward your health, maybe. It's kind of hard to translate. Okay, so uh, you want to you want to say zazdarovye. Давайте выпьем zazdarovye. Uh, or zadrujbu, zadrujbu for here's to friendship, or here's to art, zaiskustva. Okay, so those are a few rather highfalutin toasts. And you could also drink to a uh, a person, in which case you'd put them into the accusative, right? So давайте выпьем за Федора Михайловича. Or давайте выпьем за Анну Андреевну, right? Using here the first name and pat the, the name and patronymic, right? In a in a formal context. By the way, что можно купить детям на стоимость одного литра водки? Uh, what can one buy for children for the price of a single liter of vodka? Well, any number of things, I suppose. But moving right along. Um, Let's look now at Davai expressions. And by the way, here's a famous poster, Niet, right? This guy is saying no to vodka. Uh, very, this is a very famous poster, of course, one of the most famous ones. Uh, let's look at a little mock dialogue I composed uh, inspired by this poster. So someone says, Slushi, давай выпьем. Hey, come on, let's have a drink, right? Niet, давай не будем пить. Okay, there's the negative equivalent. Niet, let's not... Let's not drink. Let's not have a drink. Davai ne budim pit. Now look how in the negative uh, suggestion we've switched from the perfective to the imperfective. Right? So then he says, Ne nada tak noga pit. Right? There's no need to drink so much. Ladna ne pietje. So the guy says, Okay, then don't drink. And the implication clearly is that I'm going to. Right? <laughs> okay, don't drink if you want, but I'm, 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 I'm drinking. Have it your own way. Okay. So let's look at some examples here uh, with smatret and posmatret. Okay, let's look at first the positive example. Davai or davaitje. Okay, that, that itself is an imperative form. We learned it already, right? It literally means give, give. But again, we're using it here in a special construction meaning let's. Let's do this, let's do that. It's a suggestion about what we uh, are going to do. Right? So we follow that with a future tense mui form of the verb. Now, note crucially that if this is a positive suggestion, we use the perfective. For example, давай посмотрим film, or давайте посмотрим film, right? If we're using a vui imperative. Now, if we <clears throat> uh, want to make a negative suggestion, right? The same thing, but throwing in a nie. Then uh, we switch to the imperfective, right? Hey, let's not do this. Right? And again, the idea is sort of like, let's not do this at all. It's not that we don't want to go and do it by accident or something. It's this, this kind of general thing. Oh, no, let's not do that. Imperfective. Okay, now look what we're getting. We're switching to the imperfective, but we're still getting a future tense mui form of the verb. Uh, but since it's imperfective, that form is now compound future, right? Давай не будем смотреть. Or давайте не будем смотреть фильм. Okay, one more set of examples. Готовить, приготовить. Давайте приготовим борщ. Okay, there's the perfective, right? Future tense, мы приготовим. Давайте приготовим борщ. No, let's not do that, actually. Let's just get takeout. Давай не будем готовить борщ. Or вы, the вы form. Давайте не будем Готовить борщ. Okay, again, zero in on the verb forms following давай. Приготовим. That's the future мы form for the perfective verb. Не будем готовить. That is the future tense мы form of an imperfective verb. And therefore, we're seeing the compound future. Okay, we can also use давай constructions to make a я suggestion, right? Not let us do something together, but let me do something. Sort of like in English, like, oh, let me do that, or why don't I do that, right? So, uh, very simple construction again, but now we need the ya form of the verb. Давай я тебе помогу. Okay, look at that. This is now a future tense ya form of the 
of the verb from pomoich we do pomagu, right? Davai ya tibye pomagu, let me help you. Or plural uh, command, davai tia, right? Hey guys, davai tia ya vam pomagu, let me help you. Again, here using bri. Davai ya tis hey, why don't I do it? Let me do it. Or speaking to multiple people or being polite, davai tia ya tis right? Why don't I do it? Let me do it. Okay, so those are two really useful uh, constructions there. It's also worth noting that you can use the davai or davai all by itself, kind of drawing on the context to, to know what you're talking about. But if someone makes a suggestion, you can say davai, davai, or davai tia, meaning, hey, let's do it, let's do it, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, let's make a few of these davai constructions. Uh, and again, we need to keep in mind that we need the future tense mui form of whatever verb we're using. Uh, at least for the for the we uh, suggestion, right? The let's. Okay, let's wash the dishes. Positive. That's going to be perfective. Davai. And let's use this. Let's pretend we're speaking to one person here. Davai, pamoyim pasudu. Right. Davai pamoyim pasudu. Let's not do it now with the negative. We switch into imperfective. Davai ni budim muit pasudu. Davai ni budim muit pasudu. Or number three, let me wash the dishes. Okay, now we need a ya form of the verb. Future. Davai ya pamoyu pasudu. Davai ya pamoyu pasudu. Okay, if, if you're making that suggestion to more than one person or being polite, we would use vui, and we would simply change each davai to davai tje. Okay, chitait uh, prachitait. Let's read this article. Positive, that's going to be perfective. Davai tje. Let's not read this article. Imperfective. Давайте. Now I'm using давайте all of a sudden. Давайте. Давайте не будем читать эту статью. Давай or давайте не будем читать эту статью. Number six. Why don't I read this article? Давай я прочитаю эту статью. Number seven. Let's call mom. Okay, remember this is a shifting stress, uh, sorry, in stress, in stress uh, verb. Although, by the way, a lot of Russians treat it as shifting stress. Number seven, let's call mom. Давай позвоним маме. Or, давайте позвоним маме. Let's not call mom. Давайте не будем звонить. Давайте не будем звонить маме. Number nine, why don't I, why don't I call her? Давай я позвоню маме. Or, давайте я позвоню маме. By the way, on the bottom of page 150, we see that uh, sometimes the sometimes the infinitive can be used almost as an imperative, right? And we sort of saw that already in a certain sense with that Lenin quotation, учиться, 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 right? Literally, to study, to study, to study, or to learn, to learn, to learn, right? But it's obviously being used as a kind of command or suggestion. Uh, so those kind of um, forms can be used in rather formal, kind of bossy situations like machining ne parkovat, right? Don't park the car or no parking. Or as we saw already, ne prislanyatsa, right? Don't lean against the door in the subway. Ne prislanyatsa. Or even more simply, ne kurit, don't smoke. Ne kurit. Okay, so we we first learned. Uh, so-called you imperatives, right? Second person imperatives. Hey, you or you all do this, do that. Now we've just reviewed uh, so-called first person imperatives, right? Uh, which we could think of as sort of suggestions, right? Let us do this or let me do it or that kind of thing, right? A we or a I or me, right? First person. That leaves us with third person imperatives or again, we could really think of these as suggestions, right? How would we say something like let him do it? Let her do it. Let them do it. Right. So this could be third person singular or third person plural. Right. How would we say that in Russian? Well, this is the simplest construction yet. We simply use pust, pust, which, like davai, with the first person imperatives, is itself an imperative form. Right. Uh, davai means literally to give, and pust literally means let. It's from the verb pustit, which means to release or launch or let, right, that kind of letting. Uh, okay, so uh, it's very much like the English that way, really. 
so let's look at some examples. Let's take делать, uh, сделать, and uh, here are some examples of that. Пусть делает, что хочет. Пусть делает, что хочет. Let him or her do what he or she wants. Okay, so we see this is very simple. We simply follow пусть with a third person verb form. It can be uh, right present or or uh, future, right? Just a conjugated form. Right, пусть делает, right? That's present tense and perfective. Yeah, let him do what he wants, or sh let her do what she wants. Пусть делает, что хотят. There it is in the plural, right? But no real change. We just use a plural form of the verb. Пусть делает, что хотят. Or let's get a perfective example. Пусть он это сделает, right? Let him do it, perfective. Let him go and do it. Um, we can also use пусть. It's heard very often in the sense of well, let let it be, right? I don't care. Well, let it let them do what they want. Let people say what they want. Whatever, I don't care. For example, она не будет тебе звонить. She's not going to call you. Ну и пусть, right? Пусть or ну и пусть is kind of a fuller form of that expression. Мне все равно. I don't care. It's all the same to me. Мне все равно. Here's a little poster from a uh, featuring lyrics from a Soviet children's song. Пусть всегда будет небо, пусть всегда будет солнце, пусть всегда будет мама, пусть всегда буду я. Right? May there always be sky, may there always be sun, may there always be mama, may there always be me. You know, this is a very innocent-looking poster, but I would classify this along with the Vesmir Budit Nash. This is a demonic uh, communist toddler, right? Because he thinks he's going to live forever, and and uh, that's that's very depraved, I think, right? And <laughs> anyway, at some point, someone is going to disabuse him of these illusions, right? That you know, unfortunately, uh, propaganda aside, the the Soviets failed to abolish death, and so unfortunately. All of these things will come to an end, including the son and him and his mother and <laughs> everything. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyway, uh, let's do a few examples um, reviewing the range of imperatives we've learned. Okay, look at number one, cook dinner. Okay, that's a, that's a you imperative, right? Hey, you, cook dinner. Let's use, let's assume we'll use, we'll use tzu here, unless we have some reason not to. Okay, so uh, it's a one-time command. Uh, do this, do that, right? Приготовь ужин. Приготовь ужин. Let's not cook dinner. Okay, there's a first person, right? We're going to start out with давай. And we're going to, it's a negative, so we're going to need a future мы form of готовить. That'll be давай не будем готовить ужин. Давай не будем готовить ужин. Number three, let dad cook dinner. That's a third person imperative, so we're going to use пусть, right? Let dad do it. Пусть папа приготовит ужин. Number four, why don't I write to them? Okay, that's a first person suggestion. We're going to use давай. Давай я им напишу. Давай я им напишу. Number five, don't write to them. Okay, there's a you imperative, right? Hey, don't do that. Uh, again, we're going to assume that's probably a universally bad idea, right? We're going to use imperfective. Don't write to them ever, as a rule. Не пиши им. Не пиши им. Number six, let them write us. Okay, that's a third person, right? So we're going to use пусть. Пусть они нам напишут. Пусть они нам напишут. Пусть они напишут. Number seven, give her a call. Okay, that sounds like a you imperative, right? Give her a call, call her up. Sounds like a one-time positive thing. So we're going to use позвонить. Позвони ей. Remember, that takes the dative. Позвони ей. No, let's not call her. Okay, that's an uh, a we, a, a first person plural. We're going to start with давай. Давай не будем звонить ей. Давай не будем звонить ей. Number nine, let her call us. Okay, that's third person, let her do it. So we're going to start out with пусть. Пусть она нам позвонит. Пусть она позвонит. Right, let her call. Пусть она позвонит. And again, if you want to throw in the us, that's going to be dative with this verb. That would be нам. 
Okay, here are a few everyday imperatives uh, if you want to learn some really practical ones. Um, right, with говорить сказать, we get things like скажите, пожалуйста, right? Tell me, please. Okay, so that's a that's a polite way to just interrupt someone and ask them for directions or whatever. Скажите, пожалуйста, где здесь туалет? Где здесь туалет? Where here is the toilet, so to speak, the restroom? Дайте, пожалуйста, да, 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 right? We mentioned already that can be a way to order in restaurants or to simply request just about anything. Дайте, пожалуйста, and then we get a direct object in the accusative. Квас, воду, пиво, or whatever. Now, how do you say excuse me? That's very easy. You use the verb for to excuse, which is извинить, извини. Now, if we think about that, we, we're not saying always forgive me, right? If we step on someone's toes, we don't say, oh, please forgive me as a rule, right? No, we're asking for, an, for it to be excused for this one faux pas or whatever, right? So that's uh, going to be perfective. And this is just kind of a fixed expression, of course, right? Извини, извините. Excuse, literally. Finally, if someone sneezes, you can say, будь здоров to a male right, будь meaning literally be healthy, note the short form adjective, or to a female, будь or being polite or speaking to multiple people, we use the plural, будьте здоровы, будьте здоровы. By the way, here's a final poster with a пусть, right, using the verb здравствовать, which we're used to seeing in the imperative greeting, здравствуй, здравствуйте, here we have it used in a pust expression, a quote from Stalin, Pust здравствует и процветает наша Родина, right, may our homeland uh, be healthy, right, здравствует, maybe we could say thrive, and uh, процветает, may it blossom or prosper. Процветает uh, literally has to do with an idea of flowering or blossoming, and then by extension, you know, abundance, uh, prospering, flourishing, and so forth. Okay, so now we've, uh, luckily, we've covered the full range of imperative forms in Russian, right? First person imperatives with davai, second person, which are the special imperative forms we learned yesterday, and finally today, third person imperatives with pust, right? So if you've learned these forms, uh, obviously they're extremely useful. And you now know the imperative. There's really nothing else to, uh, to learn about it, aside maybe from practicing uh, the imperative forms of maybe some more unusual verb types. Okay, so that's enough for today. Until next time, do свидания, товарищи.